Oh, I see. I see now. This Aquarian sea creature that the center the center of the, the water part, when you follow the water part, is he's on his knees. And I remember Steve saying, Steve and James Sean, who lives in Michigan, right where his head is, pretty much in this eye. Linwood, Bay City. Linwood should be right. In this area. This Bay City, I was had a hotel booked and then my battery started to die. Very unusual timing. Paul Bagley warned me about it. Anyway, so you're right up there, Steve. You're right in the right in the eye portion. Somewhere in our there you are. Linwood. Right here. So Steve is basically the left eye. Lives over here near the left eye. Is that a like a mole? Right? Like like uh Robert De Niro. <laughs> This place is all bright and lit up. So he's basically, he's on his knees because he's kneeling down to the armor bear. Because the armor bear is a consuming fire. Christ is a consuming fire. And his hair is on fire. His chains are broken loose. So he's going to have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So over here you got someone who lies their ass off all the time. Stephen James Deshaun. Because he lies about me all the time. And then over here you have a king... And over here you have a dragon. So at some at some point you have a you have the dragon, the beast, the king, the beast, and the false prophet. There's three of them. They get thrown alive into the lake of fire. Lake of fire is something that's consumingly burning off the burning off your Facade, burning off the lies, because in the end, they finally stop. They're getting burned off, but they haven't stopped yet. Not from this false prophet over here. So does that, res does that represent the house of Cain being brought to its knees? Because it sure seems like it. But he's brought to his knees in front of this armor bearer who's in front of this king who's before the fire who is being the authority has been given over by the dragon because out of the mouth of the dragon will come the beast the false prophet out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the dragon will literally come out the beast, the false prophet. Adam here. Adam, <clears throat> when you get rid of the, the labels. Adam here, he's asleep, wounded head. He has the whore who's in front of him, who lives, the head, so the head of 
this horror is riding this beast from right underneath of his nose. Adam here, because of his Adam's apple, and his hair, ponytail, hair like a woman. I saw two horns like a lamb, spoke like a dragon, and a, well, because the dragon gave him his power. But I also seen a beast rising up from the sea, a reptilian T-Rex with his eye here, I seen that he was pregnant with the little happy little little baby there. Eye in the mouth. So I saw a beast rising up from the sea. And I was born in Bartow, Florida. Where it's a horseshoe. It's a horseshoe magnet. Why was I born there? I never lived in Bartow. I don't have a Bartow address. Matter of fact, at the time, I lived at 1702 Ariana Street, like Ariana, 1702 Ariana Street in Polk, Lakeland, Florida, 33 and 3 eighths. And then my dad, relation to child, Uh, what? What's going on here? How come I don't see father underneath of William Hugh T's? 29, okay, we get that. State of birth, or state of... State of where you're at. Informant Does that say father name? Am I missing something? Am I miss it? Informant. All right, so my mom's an informant. I, okay, I get it. Mother relationship. Okay, so you're my mother. I get it now. And then father's name up here. It must, yeah, that has to be what his father name. William Hugh Tease. 29, Pennsylvania. I see now. But the point is, I never lived in Barton. We lived in Lakeland. Clearly, there's the, there's the street. Let me see if I can find this place. 1702. Well, before I find that, let me let me let me back up from let me back up from this magnet. The the shoe of the horse. It's a horse shoe. It's the shoe of the horse. Here's the shoe of the horses. And it's meant for a future ruler. He just has to find out that he would be right about there. 21. Yeah. 21, the A, number 8. 21. Hundred days from the time my YouTube birth happened on April second, two thousand seventeen, till the end, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, is exactly twenty one hundred days. 
it's also exactly 69 months. It's exactly 300 weeks and 2100 days and 144 uh, 18,181,440,000 seconds of airtime that I've spent. Well, not full airtime, but the amount of air time that I had to spew my garbage is that many. So Robin Henry Tease was born in District 8. After 2100 days as a ruler from birth, to be magnetized by my spells. Instead of me being born over there in Mary SMD, 300 Park View Plaza Lake. It all. It already sounds. It look. It already sounds fancy. Over here is like Bartow Regional Medical Center. This is Park Place Palace Lake Land, the land of the lakes. Gardner. Gardner. I know another gardener. The gardener. Didn't Mary think that Jesus was the gardener at one point? one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means Rabbi teacher. Jesus, as a carpenter, born into the family business that first Christmas morning, the very beginning of time. In the last devotional, we saw Jesus as a carpenter. You know, the funny thing is, I also became a carpenter. Now, it wasn't actually my intention. I went to Thaddeus Stevens State School of Technology. I had three choices. I picked cabinet making first, and I picked carpentry, and then I picked... Something else. I forgot what it, you got. Three options though. My oh, oh no, I picked architecture drafting number one, then carpentry, then cabinet making. I took the basic math test when I was supposed to take the algebra test to be an architectural drafter, but nobody told me that I had to take that test to be that. I so I took the basic math test. It's almost like they didn't want me to be a, an architect. So Robin Henry Tease has satisfactorily completed the course of study in carpentry and academic studies prescribed and approved by the Board of Trustees. The Board of Trustees is declared a graduate. It's the funniest thing, too, because to graduate from that school without even having a high school diploma 
graduate of Thaddeus Stevens State School of Technology and is awarded this diploma. On the 12th day of May, 1996, President Thaddeus Stevens, I don't know what's that, Chad, a, uh, can't really read it, Chairman, Board of Trustees, couldn't tell you what that name is. This was on May 12th, 1996. I was 19 years old, and I just graduated a two-year college, had college courses with the carpentry for the, instead of being a doctor, a lawyer, I, I'm work, I do the lawyer work now. I started as the carpenter. And <clears throat> so you have to graduate these college courses. These classes were, they weren't that, that easy. When I was uh, 19, considering I never went to high school. So I never went to high school. I got a two-year junior college degree or diploma in carpentry. So there's my logo, a bulldog. I went to this school for free. I went from being locked up at a Slayton Farms in Lima, PA for eight months. I wound up getting my GED. On February 18th, get out of the way, stupid. February 18th, 1994. Took the, the, the test January 26th. I was about eight months in. No, I forget how many months in I was. But I only did eight months. My score was 244. Considering I never went to high school in my life. My writing skills were better than average. My social studies, a little bit better than a little better than average. Science, through the roof on better than average. So, I really enjoyed my science class. Reading skills, not so much. Even Matthew will tell you I butchered words, and so I, I had to learn on that. Mathematics skills, not the greatest. Although I'm in carpentry, and that's all I really uses math, but not really complicated math. Congratulations, your test score meet the requirements for a Commonwealth secondary diploma. However, because most people don't get their GEDs before they're 18, you're going to have to wait to get yours. So what I did was I skipped right through high school, didn't develop the social skills until I started my YouTube channel. That made up for it. And I didn't have to get truly brainwashed by all of the learning that they that they push for four years. Just went right through, did eight months, got that real quick, and then headed over to Thaddeus Stevens, where they paid me four hundred about fifty dollars probably a semester just to go there because I was I was poor. What I did was I lived in the dorm. I lived in one of these dorms. That's the front. I was back here. Here the gym is here. Gym is there. I was back here living in that one of those dorms. For free. And they paid me to go there. And then when I graduated, I was only 19. Most people graduate from high school at 19, and then they got to go to a college. I found a college. They changed the name to college since then because it was a, they said trade school, but Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. A Masonic school, like which one isn't? The football field. And then I went back after my 20 year anniversary and held a, 
you know, one of those host stands to hire people and I wind up hiring someone that was doing the carpentry for the summer and it worked out pretty good. So I, I tested the wooders with certain, certain things that worked and then YouTube just took over everything, everything. Everything I was thinking and doing, YouTube completely took it over. And Gene has the laboratory for computing integrated machine, machining, machining. We held it in, in there. I was in the back corner right around here. The, if the door was in this direction, I was back here. Me, my brother, and uh, my, my son went. Because they all worked for me at the time. Me, my own son did. I used to live at 2100 Elkhart. 21 Elkhart Street. 911. 34. My, my dad drew me a car when he was in jail because he was in jail when I was like three. And then when he got out, him and my mom didn't stay together. So I really didn't know what it was like. And he's like, he drew this car and he calls it the Rock and Robin. My pop was a pretty damn good artist. This was in 1983, so I was seven years old, and he was still in jail. He drew another one. Sure was glad to see your letter and the car you made me, because so I drew him back one. And then he's saying, please be good, stay out of trouble. Draw me another car when you get time. You really draw good. And tell mommy... The same thing that you had, Robin, when you went to jail, when your kid was uh, two and a half, you kind of did the same thing. You were on the same track as your father, where you're in jail. It's your three to seven years old. So from three to seven, I was in jail for my kid two and a half to four. My time was cut short. I got out sooner. And, uh, and then I straightened up from that point on. But I also had problems with mail, <laughs> trying to get it to his mother. And it's just like, tell mommy, I wrote her two times, but never got an answer yet. So just like when I was in jail, I was trying to reach my son. I just really couldn't, no matter how much I tried, couldn't do it. So I think someone here is gang stalking me uh, with the mail. So, well, that's all for now. Rock and Robin. Tweet, tweet, tweet. And a official GED. A general educated dummy. That's what people would call a GED. But with my GED, I literally skipped through by me being a criminal, going to jail for eight months, staying there. Skipping through high school, not going, because I, I couldn't go anyway. I was locked up at Slayton Farms when I was 14, and I ran. And then I stayed out until about 16, and then I got caught. Once I got caught, they sent me back to the same place. I stayed there for eight months. Within the first two months, I started working at Pizza Hut. So basically, out of 500 people, there was only three white kids, and I was the only pure white kid. Because I was pure... When inside and out, my, my language didn't change to somebody else's language. And, uh, and I went to school every day studying for the GED. Just I got it all done in eight months. I went in. I seen the same people. Eight months later, I left. I seen the same people. Got in, got out, went straight to... Thaddeus Stevens, they basically drove me to Thaddeus Stevens. 
And one teacher told me about it, a horticulture teacher. It had nothing to do with this school of fate of Slayton Farms, the lockup facility. He was just a teacher that told me about that school that had a way of getting poor people in. I signed up for it. They said, you're approved. You can, you can come on in as a mason, Robin. Come on in to our college. And then I got a free education. And then I started going to work before my 20s with a, an actual carpenter's job being an interior trimmer. And I did that for a year and a half. Met a guy, Barry, that hired me after that as a subcontractor and then made me his partner maybe six months later because he's seen how fast and motivated I was with getting shit done. And it all started by not having any guidance from my dad uh, and mom from not being together. Two criminal brothers that just were always getting into trouble. And that was the decision that I made. That's why I took carpentry. In the first devotional in this series, we looked at Jesus's appearance as the creator God at the very beginning of time. In the last devotional, we saw Jesus as a carpenter born into the family business that first Christmas morning. Today, in John chapter 20, we see Jesus being mistaken for a gardener after his resurrection. Yeah, sure does like winking his one eye a lot. So doesn't even make sense. Besides, he's showing his devotion to his creator. It's the only thing I can really think of. Gardener Mary. I don't know. Really? Really? Oh, wait. I forgot to find out where I used to live. Let me see where I used to live. So from Gardner Mary SMD, I lived... Eight minutes away. Go figure! <laughs> Four miles... Instead, they, they said, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, m mother. You're going to have to go. You can, ha you can just have to go up further. So let's examine this area here. So Lakeland, Bartow Road. This is Skies Boulevard, 563. Lake Hunter. Turn right by the McDonald's there. You're going to pass Pizza Hut. I don't know if any of this was there before. Let's see where I used to live. In a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. South Grady Ave. So this is where I was conceived. Ariana. Ariana. Look at this. There's like nothing. Just trailers. Oh, 
Wait. Is it a different place? It's back here. You gotta go back. Here. This other trailer. Yeah, yeah, there it is. That's what it was. Cars are parked in the back. Ariana Street. It's not a bad place. Not a great place either. So I'm born in the swamp land. I lived in Swampville. There's a swamp right here. So you would think, you would think it's like, all right, Miss uh, Tease Kopchinski, I forget what your name was at the time. You're pregnant. You're getting ready to break. It's like, all right, well, let's go to the nearest hospital. Let's go to Gardner Mary SMD. Let's go there. Let's go to this hospital. This big, beautiful Lakeland Regional Health Park Place Plaza. Let's go there. It sure seems like they have plenty of room in this building. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of just buildings and, and room and space. There's even a parking terminal. There's a place to take care of your children, the Health Lakeland Children's Place. There's probably even schools down there. But no, we're sorry, ma'am. <laughs> nah, you're going to have to go a little bit further. Instead of a nine-minute drive, four miles from Ariana Grande's road, You're going to have to go a little bit further. You're going to have to go like 21 minutes. And if your water breaks before then, oh well. I'm sorry, man. We just don't have any room for you at the inn. You might want to drive down here to this little, this little shack. You need to get down here to this horseshoe. Because you know what, ma'am? In the future, your son will become a... But not only that, he'll become the... Does that mean I'm of the seventh? I mean, what's going on here? All I'm doing is looking at the landscape as to where I was, apparently I was born so I can have a magnetic field as the horse's shoe. And then I can draw all particles unto me. <laughs> two numbers of my social security number equal 11. 
the second two numbers of my social security also equal 11. The third two numbers of my social security number equal 11. And the last number, or the, la the next two social security, no, next two numbers of my social security equal 11. All right, and then the last number, it's a single number of my social security number equals seven. Uh. Robin Henry Tees, June 28, 1976. Born in Bartow, Florida. And I come to find out when I have a conscious mind. From the time that I remember being able to see, I had a burnt toe. As in a barcode. Supposedly from an iron that fell. Right, Dawn? That's what you said. I mean, you know, from... It's unusual how things are so tied together. But I was born in District 8. I wonder if that is just another random circumstance. Being born in District 8. So that one of the seven angels who had set, had seven bowls came and spoke to me saying, Come here. I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. So as I just showed you, in the last video, hold on Mary, I gotta, I gotta zoom out of here, zoom out. I have to turn things upside down. You see this guy's face and his nose right here? I love when that does that. Love it. Before I turn things upside down. Who's that? What's that? That's a nose. For sure, his bald head. So he's bald headed. Almost like Robocop. Right? Robocop. But let me turn things upside down first and show you the whore that rides the beast. <clears throat> the whore that's riding the beast. There's a couple of different interpretations of it, but if you're down here in the in the bottom portion, this elephant trunk that Joel Karim was talking about when he first started his YouTube video. 11 years, 11 months, and 11 days before I started my first video. What's your social security number, Steve, you're saying? 11, 11, 11, 11, 7? Don't you live up here in Michigan? Don't you live in Linwood, which would be somewhere around the the edge of the the pimple here of Lake Huron, Hurrid, Huron Road. And you live somewhere like here, Linwood, right off the the water, which would be in the eye. You see this beast here, this reptilian creature. The head, the hair, the nose coming up. Almost like a like wings. This creature here well came out of the mouth of the dragon with the eye who's standing on the sand of the seashore. Right over where Corian Tees is at. Orientees, Mexico. All I'm showing everybody is my land. Just showing you that I know where I was born 
And I know that uh, in Michigan here, see that Michigan, right in the head with the head of the the whore, it's riding the beast. You can look at it either way: good beast, bad beast. The eighth being even of the seventh, and then this Adam here is allowing it to happen. So that reminds me of King Ahab and Jezebel riding the beast, the beast system. Now out of the mouth, this dragon came, came the, the beast and the false prophet. Here's a, someone that looks like a king, and in his mouth, in the very center point, is this face, this creature here. Almost an alien type slave in a beast collar. And because this sea creature is on his knees, and the only way anything's going to change is if, the, is if the house of Cain is brought to his knees. Because he would have to bow down to. Let me get to his level here. He would have to kneel down to the armor bearer who is a consuming fire. And his chains are broken. And the king is before the fire. 4321 be still Robin Henry T's noted I am Adam and David. But I say I say with now four searches, be still Adam, then David, Prince of Judah, and know that I am Robin Henry Tease. Oh, be still Robin Henry Tease, and know that I am Adam, then David, Prince of Judah. Well, you only got 10 clicks, and you've been up, this has been up forever, and it's been reset, and you've been added. You, you see, any of these can just be taken out. You don't see it anymore. But you still see, even though it was reset, you still see the same entries. Like, I have called by name Beezebel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. Son of Uriah. Is it the Hittite that was killed, and you're the son of him? 77 South, King Huron Road. Linwood, Michigan. Stephen James Sean revealed the secret prophecy of the hidden Gematria Bible code. Be still, Robin Henry. He's noted, I am Adam Ben David, Prince of Judah. And I just typed mine in maybe an hour ago. And I'm already in the fourth entry. So I'm, I'll be in the first page by the end of the night. I'll be in the first page. I'm not, I don't even think it adds to it if I type it in. It has to be somebody different, right? Apparently other people are already typing it in. Because it sounds better. I know who you are. I know you're Adam Ben David, Prince of Judah. But I'm Robin Henry Tease. And that's all I am. So... I will show you the judgment of the heart who sits on many waters. Is that not water? Is that not water up there? And then on top of that, she is sitting. She, whatever it is, the reptilian up here. That slows my computer down. Is right there. With whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and fornications, and inhabited 
the inhabitants of the earth had made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. So she was sitting. This is definitely somebody sitting down because the leg proves it. Full names of blasphemy. And having seven horns and ten, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and was decked with gold and precious pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Then when you look at the Philadelphia landscape, where the park is in front of the art museum, you see the hybrid alien type reaching over with a cup taking from from the tree of life. And upon her forehead was a name mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Mystery explained. And the angel said to me, why did you wonder? What do you, why are you astonished? What's, what are you marveling at? I'm going to tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her. So the beast that carries her could tie into the beast rising up from the earth and wounding the head of the first beast whose power was given to them by the dragon who stood on the sand of the seashore. over here in Cory and T's Island. That beast there is a dragon with the tail. And also, when you turn that into Adam, that tail becomes his ponytail with his Adam's apple and his nose. And Jezebel is under his nose as Ahab has a wounded head. If that ties into it, not sure, but this has two horns like a lamb. And this whole image has face of a man and a hair like a woman. So out of this mouth of the dragon comes the beast and the false prophet. Now, the beast and the false prophet, because the only liar that I know of, that outright lies is Stephen James Sean because he lies about me and he happens to live right here in the eye of this harlot riding this beast. See, you see the, you can see the face clear. It's turned to the side. It's almost turned to the side, like with the ear up here. And the, the whore hold, holding on right there. Oh, come on. There. Holding on to something, sitting down, riding this horsey looking thing. If these two feet were at the same portion, because the mouth is right here and the nose and the eye is in this area and the ponytail type of horsey looking thing. Riding it. And because that's what came out of the mouth of the dragon that's standing on the sand of the seashore. But I also see a, seen a beast rising up from the sea, paddling his way up through that, the travel, the art of travel. Making it look like the, you know, like the Tasmanian devil. The feet are just <laughs> flying up like that. Coming up toward to the swamp land. 
because I'm draining the swamp with this horse sea creature here. Like the, I forget what the name of that kind of horse is, a seahorse. Yeah, seahorse. You get the picture, right? Dolphin feet. The beast, the beast you saw was and is not. And is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. What beast are you talking about? The beast that the woman is riding. The beast that the woman is riding. So the beast you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into go into bottomless pit and go to destruction go to its destruction like yeah you'd be crucified go into perdition like Stephen James perdition and they that dwell on earth shall wonder, like, what the hell? No, that's not, it can't be. It can't be. I hope it ain't. Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, but yet is. You see, this beast that was slain and he is not at the moment because truly there's no actual public authority that's been given over but it will come it will come so here is the mind who has wisdom the seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits and they are seven kings. If I had to pick seven kings. So if I'm excluding Stephen James and Sean here, simply because he lives up in Michigan, then, well, the next, you got Derek Bros, you got Steve Noon, you have Jonathan Cleck, you have Jacob Israel, you have Paul Bagley, you have Gene Kim, and don't worry, Skip, I didn't skip you. Skip Heitzing. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's eight. Now, there are seven kings, five have fallen. Five of whom have fallen. One is, which is the sixth. So it reminds me of that story about the woman, the woman uh, at the well. Christ is like, if you knew who it was that was asking you for water, and and he's like, well, go get your husband. She's like, I have, I don't have a husband. And he said. That is correct, because you had five of them, and the one that is, is not your husband, At you know, is, is not actually your husband. So the one is, but the other has not yet come. Five are fallen, one is, which would be six, and he's talking to someone, so there's seven altogether. The other one has not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain for a little while. Sometimes Christ talks in the third person. He's referring to himself, but I'm not sure yet if he's referring to himself. I have to keep reading. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Okay, yeah, I believe he is talking about it. Because he just said, 
It's the one that was before, but is not now. So it's like he was crucified. And then is yet, which will be to come, he will also be of the eighth. So Stephen James isn't saying anything about the eighth. The last number, or the, la the next two social security, no, next two numbers of my social security equal 11. All right, and then the last number, it's a single number of my social security number equals seven. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. I, I think this is even cooler. This is even cooler because I'm the eighth ruler. Because I was born in a little tiny, little teeny weeny, tiny Orto Regional Medical Center as the horse's shoe, magnetizing, drawing all people in my direction. Positive and negative, both sides together. You can't even make this stuff up. And but yet it's right there. It's it's right there in your face. Right here. In your face. All these nuts and bolts. All these nuts and bolts. My doctor, my doctor who gave birth. Manuel Fiesta. Barbara Jean is not my mother. <laughs> it's a... and look who signed down here. The registrar signature. It's John Cox. Yep, look at that. John Cox. The deputy. Not the sheriff, but the deputy. Does this say how many pounds I was when I was born? It should, right? 11.30. There was silence for like a half hour uh, after I was born because everybody's like, shh, don't tell Robin. He has to figure it out on his own. On June 28th. So basically my... I, I didn't even... You know, what's, you know what else is messed up? June 28th, I only get a half hour of that day to be part of my birthday. And then the next day comes and it's over. Just like that, it's over. I don't even have time to celebrate my birthday. It's at 11.30 at night. And then the next half hour, your birthday's over. That's not even cool. Not only did I get rejected from the, uh, the inn, like the, the Hotel California, Lakeland, because there was no room there for my mom to birth me. Instead, they gang-stalked her and told her to go. They told her to go 20 minutes away, drive 14 miles. You, you need to drive 10 more miles instead of 8 minutes away. We don't care if your water breaks when you're down here on Ariana Street. You're going to have to go, instead of going like right where it's at, the hospital. You need to keep going further up. Yeah, you keep going. You know, you got to keep going. There you go. They're at Lake Hancock. 
John Cox was the signature and Manuel Fiesta was the doctor that Manuel's the one that pulled my head out of my mother. And the beast that was back then and is not at the moment, but trust me, he will be. The eighth, and he is even of the seven. Last number. It's a single number of my social security number equals seven. Uh, Isn't that cool? All right, Stephen James Perdition. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings. I just showed you at least uh, eight of them who have not yet received the kingdom, but they receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. So the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom. They receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. The beast for one hour. These have one purpose and they give their power and their authority to the beast. Well, which, who, which one? These will wage war against the lamb. So you see how there's, there's somebody that has the control. There's a beast out there who has the power over these ten kings. And then the next, very next sentence, victory of the lamb. These will wage war against the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, because he is, he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful to him. And he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are the people, the multitudes, the nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw, and the beast, these will hate the harlot. This beast, right here, and the ten horns, these will hate the, har the harlot. And will make her naked and desolate. Just by being naked and desolate is just revealing the truth of where you came from. And to reveal the, the landscape <clears throat> where everything is. Because this really is. Look, do you see the, the, the horn? The little horn? We'll make her desolate and naked and we'll eat her flesh and burn her up with fire. Because he's a consuming fire set. So it looks like this is the eighth beast. This is the eighth. He's of the seven. He's going to go into, he's going into Sean Perdition, uh, Stephen James Perdition. Over here in Michigan, the house of Cana was brought to its knees. Is this like the icing on the cake video? For God has put into their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose. Look, look what you're seeing. And by giving their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God will be fulfilled. Until the words of God will be fulfilled. So in other words, that nation will be brought forth 
There's no stopping it until it's brought forth. These kings are going to give their give their their power over to this beast until the words of God will be fulfilled. Not not should maybe will be. So the woman you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Is that you, Steve? Because it sure seems like it. It seems like it just seems like you're in this scripture. And if you're in this scripture, then I must be in the scripture as well. But you're a dude. You're not a woman. <laughs> None of you are male, female. The woman on the beast. So there you have it. Revelation 17. The landscape shows it. Let's go to Revelation 13. I'll show you some more landscape matching. The dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. The dragon standing on the sand of the seashore. There's his foot. There's his foot. Foot. Football. Oh, you know where football and soccer came from, the names? It's, uh, it's funny because I heard that in my own head, I was thinking to myself, I'm, I'm praying to God. I'm like, God, can you give me the information that I need to know about where these names came from? So I thought to myself, I'm thinking, and I'm like, yes, uh, it's soccer came from the guy who created football. Uh, soccer, the name of soccer came from a, an abusive husband because all the only thing he would always do is he would sock her in her face because he's an abusive husband. So the woman, the way that they got the name football is because the woman got tired of getting socked in the face, so he kicked him in his nuts. Her, so her foot kicked him in his balls, and she's like, why don't you name it football instead, instead of soccer? Because she got tired of getting abused because he kept socking her. And then she kicked him in the nuts and turned that game into being called football. And then hockey, 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 uh, it's like a hawk, hockey, 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 or baseball. Now, I don't know where baseball and hockey came from. Only football and soccer. So in this next passage, we're going to be talking about the beast rising up from the sea and the dragon who's standing on the sand in the seashore and a wounded head, but did live. So I saw the dragon stand on the sand of the seashore. This one says, I stood upon the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. So if I'm telling you the story, it's like, I'm standing on the sand of the seashore, and I saw a beast rising up from the sea. Or... I'm just telling you that there's a dragon standing on the sand of the seashore. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. So again, ten and the seven. Seven churches. The ten kings. <clears throat> and on his horns were ten diadems, and on his heads were blasphemous names. So that fits Stephen James still. It fits, it fits him as the beast rising up out of the sea of humanity. Uh, and then I live on earth, so I come up from the bottom. I come up from out of the pit. And then there's an angel at the bottomless pit that is doing the same. According to the script, that's, that has to be. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his throne and his great authority. So even seeing a bear 
It's like, I don't know what, I, I saw a beast. It was kind of like a leopard, but his feet were like those of a bear. I can't really, it's like big feet, big foot, like bear's feet. Like some kind of a leopard seeing the, the beast, the, this beast here rising up also from the earth. Because he's, he is the earth. This one's in the sea, therefore it's rising up from the sea. This can be considered a beast of the earth. But at the same time, the dragon standing on the sand of the seashore. So I think that's why, I think that's why it says one, the dragon stood and then I saw a beast as if he is, as if the one telling the story is the dragon. And so I saw that he, it was the feet as of those of a bear. And then there is a bear, like an armor bear. I've seen that too. And his mouth was like that of a lion. You know, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Be still, Robin Henry Tease. And the dragon gave him his power and throne and great authority. So Satan gave him his power and his throne and great authority. This beast coming up from the sea. So because this is showing you a reptilian T-Rex type of beast with a baby, maybe it's like the seventh and of the eighth, it's also showing you the actual sea creature itself, the one that rose up from the sea. It's like he rose up from the sea just so he can be brought to his knees in front of the armor bear who's on fire, which is a consuming fire. This chain's broken. I saw one of its heads as it had been slain, uh, was wounded to death, a mortal, a mortal wound. I seen the same thing, John. I seen this head here as if it was wounded. Because then it could be showing, it could be showing the same beast and not somebody different with the wounded head. And then it shows you, like, it could be showing you the same beast rising up from the sea. Then it could be showing you the same person. Now he's in a different state, Michigan, state of mind, where he's been brought to his knees, humbled. The serpent will. He's getting ready to crawl on his belly. See that? All the days of his life. So I saw one of his heads has been fatally wounded, and the earth was amazed and followed after the beast. The dragon's the one. They worship the dragon because... He gave his authority to the beast, so obviously they're going to work. They're going to worship the dragon because they're going to say, "Well, he works for Satan." Uh, say we know he Satan gave his power over to Steve over there, who is like the beast, who is able to make war and wage war with them. There was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemes. The difference between you and I is I'm human and you're not. You're unhuman. You're an antichrist. You are. And when people finally realize what you are, they're going to bash your face in. You're a hypocrite. Uh, whatever fool difference. You freaking alien. Between and won't be, it won't be found anymore. You and your people's plan is going to fall, you antichrist. But you shouldn't even I be know. on our planet, you freaking alien. I know. You're I an alien. I don't yeah, take like anything that. serious when it, we were warned about uh, God's judgment coming to the world. You're such a liar. It's sickening. I can't sit here and stomach your lies. Okay, and you get off on this. You're a narcissistic, gray freaking alien. 
<laughs> and you're gonna be rounded up. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you will be. Oh yeah. You nasty, nasty demon. May twenty first. Uh so he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and those that dwell in heaven. It was given to him, you know, by the, by the, uh, the dragon. He's not the dragon. It was given to him from the dragon. Now, you can look at the dragon as another person who had given his power to Stephen James to Sean. Or you can look at it as Satan, the spirit that runs the world, has given the power over to him. Just like Christ, where he, it's not like his dad was literally God, uh, but God gave him his power and his throne and great authority also. So in spirit, one is evil, the other is good. It's like one is Cain, the other is Abel. If you're able to bring Cain to his knees, you just may be the one brother that he killed. Not literally, but, you know, Cain killed Abel, his brother, he killed him. He left him for dead. And then his blood cried out from the earth. And so it was given to him to make war with the saints. It was given to him to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to the top leading Luciferian United States gang stalker uh, in America. And all who dwell on earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been found from the foundation of the book of the world in the book of life of the, the lamb who has been slain. All right. And in the end, he's going to be slain. Robin's lies about Elijah sickens me. So the thief is also a liar. He is a liar. He's an hypocrite. For him to say he's not lying, he is a liar. I've got, I've got. He is liar. <laughs> to prove him wrong. Four years ago, November twenty-eighth, two thousand eighteen. So you can either believe what I'm telling, or you can follow after the Joker. Heads I win, tails you lose. In other words, if you flip a coin and it lands on heads, I win. If, it, if you flip a coin and it lands on tails, you lose. Go, go figure. Just turn it upside down. Stolen the Batmobile. All right? I don't care. I don't care. But you're chasing after fool's gold. All right? And in the end, he's going to be slain. He will. I guarantee it. All those that dwell upon the earth will worship him, everyone whose name has not been written on the foundation of the world. In the book of life, of the lamb who've been slain. If you have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. <clears throat> if any man is to be taken captive, you're going to go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So here's the patience and the faith of the saints. The beast out of the earth from the bottomless pit. Beast out of hell where we're at right now. Then I saw another beast coming up out of earth, 
and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. So I saw in the literal landscape a beast coming up out of the earth, which also could be like a uh, dragon standing on the sand of the seashore. But because he's coming up out of the earth, and he's from the head of whoever this head is, kind of like an alien head, the nose here, the mouth. And at the top, you have the parents. You have the bird lady with her third eye. You see the third eye. This is the regular eye. That's the third eye. And Kim Jean over here looks like him with the hair. They're kind of watching their, uh, their beast grow up, rise up from the earth. It's like a stem of of uh, Jesse. It's a root, a root of David. So this one's rising up from the earth. He has two horns like a lamb. You see that? You see the two horns like a lamb? But speaks like a dragon. So this dragon here, out of the mouth of the dragon, comes the beast and the false prophet. But at the same time, this dragon has two horns like a lamb and speaks the language of the serpent, the serpent's language. And he all he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. So he's exercising all the all the authority that the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, he's exercising all of his authority in his face. Or I mean uh, <laughs> presence. In his presence, the present time is right now. Eleven nineteen p.m., December twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Merry Christmas! This is my Christmas gift to the planet. This video and my last video today uh, for Christmas. It's where I was born. It's it's my birth. So it's my birth and it's how I was and it's how I was conceived and the shenanigans behind telling my mom to go down freaking 14 miles away instead of four because there's no room for her to birth me inside of a rich palace. I got to go to some little peasant bill and he makes the earth and those to dwell in it to worship the first beast. His fatal wound was healed. Why would he do that? Well, because he knows his wound is healed. No matter how much you believe otherwise. Understand this. Everybody on earth will worship him. How, how does this beast here get all those to worship the first beast? Because this beast here is very deceptive. The one coming up out of the earth. I didn't say he lies. I didn't say he's a liar. I said he's very deceptive. Because your perception. And the lies you've been told. You're deceived. He's deceived you. And he makes the earth and those dwell to worship the first beast. Because he's the one that wounded his head. With his heel. And then he's the one that's able to heal. His head that was deadly wounded. And. So he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come from heaven, which is like the clouds. You see him coming in the clouds. Coming down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given to him to perform in the presence. Like giving presents today, Christmas, and in the presence of of the the one whose deadly wound was healed. It's like the Walking Dead. Remember that guy? I forget his name, but he he was like the one leaning back and he was such a dick to everybody. And then he became humbled afterwards and he was he was like the leader of the he was like the leading gang stalker in America. So he's able to perform the presence. Uh, he was he deceives those who dwell upon earth 
by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast. So Adam, the breath of life, entered into Adam. And Adam, Adam's apple, Adam here. So that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be slain. The mark of the beast. He causes all, small, great, rich, poor, free, men, slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. I'm good. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark. Or, meaning, nobody's going to be able to buy or sell except for the one that has the mark. Either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So when you type in a numbered beast of Abaddon identified, it comes to 914 in this Gematria code. Psychopath shame. A horn speaking great blasphemies. Before I get to that, trying to point to me, because the reality is this one has the horn speaking great blasphemies. This the beast rising up out of the sea, the one who has been brought to his knees, the one with the wounded head, the one who the dragon has Stand on the sand of seashore has given his power and great authority to it, that one. The, the, the real one, the absurd false information one. Well, when you have the numbered, you got to find the, the number and you got to find the name of the number of the beast that's identified by Abaddon, the angel of the bottomless pit. Nine one four. It is true I am a destroyer. It is not true I am not a liar. And I am that I am's holy gene. Orbit gene, that is. Hey Robin, you got the mark on your forehead? Yes, check. Uh has your number been identified by Abaddon, the bond angel of the bottomless pit, 914? It sure has. Check. So here is wisdom. Let him who has understand and calculate the number of the beast. For the number is, is that of a man. A man. Not a woman. Not a man. Female. Male, female. It's a number of a man. And his number is 666. So we're going to make sure that somewhere in his, in his life, when he gets a license plate, we're going to mark him. We're going to mark him with it. It's the social security number. It's God's social security number, 9666. So it looks like Revelation 13 is fulfilled. Revelation 17. What about Revelation 9? The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. <clears throat> he opened the bottomless pit. Smoke went up out of the pit, like the smoke of a great furnace. I'm going to cough in your ear. He opened the bottomless pit and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke in the pit. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth and power was given to them as scorpions of the earth power. 
They were told not to hurt the grass, the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the men who do not have the seal of God on their forehead, which means everybody except for the one who does have it on his forehead. And they were not permitted to kill anybody, but to torment for five months. And her scorpion, there's, their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. And in those days, men will seek death. So even if you try to kill yourself, don't. They're only going to bring you back to life. And will not seek it. They will long to die, and death flees from them. Can you imagine that? If I, if I said that to you, and it actually came true, when you killed yourself, and then you know damn well you killed yourself, and then next thing you know, they brought you back to life, and you have to keep living. You would have faith in me then. But then again, Derek Bro said that too. So, But it makes sense. I didn't believe it when he said it, but now I truly, thoroughly believe it. The appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads appeared to be crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women, but they had faces like men. Here's a face of a man, and here's the hair of a woman. If you, ha if you have an ear, unlike this guy, uh, listen up. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of lions. They had breasts. Plates like breastplates of iron and the sounds of the wings was like the sounds of chariots, of many horses running to battle. They have tails like scorpions. They have stings. And in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months. So they have tails like scorpions. Down here where the swamp is being drained. There's your tail, and, and also there's the scorpion, stinger. But this dude here, he's really bald headed with his nose, nostril, head, bald head, Robocop. So they have tails, horse, uh, elephant trunks. Elephant trunks, Jolt Karim. They have as king over them the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. Okay, so their king numbered the beast, the numbered beast. He was numbered, the beast was numbered by Abaddon, 914. All right, so I have Abaddon numbered me at 914. I mean, it's just what he did. He, he made my number 914, Robin Henry Tease. In the, uh, in the, in the Jewish, so the first number that's really made up hocus pocus is Jewish. Then English is in the middle, and then simple, simple searches. And in Greek, his name is Apollyon. The first woe is past. I would think the first woe is like the crucifixion. What do you think? Because the fifth angel came down. And sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, which had fallen to the earth, and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. Who? The fifth angel? The fifth angel sounded. He sounded. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Okay, so this, this, the fifth angel sounded, blew his trumpet. He saw a star, not saying which one, but maybe the bright morning star. 
faulted earth, and to him was given the key of David to the bottomless pit. So to get himself out of the torment he's been in, and then also the beast that rises up from the earth, he comes up from out of the bottomless pit also because he has he has the chain, he has the key. <clears throat> and he rose up from the bottomless pit, great smoke, smoke of a great furnace. Where's the one when he has a great chain in his hand? I think that's Revelation 20. And he has a great chain in his hand. Satan bound a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. Remember when I was crucified on 11-1, uh, my 11th month, first day? It was really my 335th day that day. It was like, a, it seemed like a thousand years ago. Because one day with the Lord is as a thousand years. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven holding the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. I saw an angel coming down from heaven from the abyss having a great chain in his hand. Where's he coming from? Well, looks like he's coming from the north. He's coming down, right? Is that not like a parachute type of coming down? Maybe that's even the wind behind him. He's skydiving down from heaven. He's coming down with a great chain in his hand. He has the key in his hand. He laid hold of the, the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for that one day. And he threw him into the abyss and shut it up and sealed it over him so that he would not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. So it only lasted for one day, and after these things he must be released for a short time. It's like a it's like a process of like a seven year process altogether. So it could be talking about the first, second, third woe within a seven year period. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and have not received the mark on their forehead and their hand, and they, and they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And they were not permitted to kill anybody. Death flees from them. Horses rushing into battle. King over them. The first woe is passed. There are two more woes hereafter. Like two. Christ came to, pro to proclaim liberty to the captives. The sixth trumpet. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river. Are you afraid of teas? And the four angels who have been prepared for the hour and the day and the month and the year were released so that they would kill a third part of mankind. And the number of army of the horsemen is 200 million. I heard the number of them. And this is how I saw in my vision. The horses and those who sat on them, the riders, had breastplates the color of fire and uh, hyacinths, this and brimstone, and heads of the horses were like heads of lion. And out of their mouth proceeded the fire and smoke and brimstone. A third of mankind was killed by these plagues, by the, smart, the, the fire and smoke and the brimstone which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails. For the tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they do harm. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the work of their hands and so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and silver and the brass and the stone and the wood 
which neither can see nor hear nor walk, and neither did repent of their murders, nor their sorcerers, nor of their immoralities, nor of their thefts. And I saw another strong angel coming down out of heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was like the sun, and his feet were like pillars of fire. And he sat, and he had in his hand a little book which was open. He placed in his, his right foot on the sea, and a, his left on the land. And... Fast forward. I looked and behold, the lamb was standing on Mount Zion, basically the highest mountain. He climbed the highest mountain. And with him, 144,000, having his, his name and the name of his father written on their forehead. So the 144,000 having his name and the name of his father, which is the Heavenly Father, written on their forehead. So that's what they knew inside of their brains. The 144,000. They have been purchased from the earth. It's 11.41 p.m., 12.25.22. This is my story. This is where I was born. These are all facts. Everything happened randomly, and I was born at a place that's magnetizing, that is the shoe of the horses, and it's meant for me later on to figure this out. That way, I can become the... So I got the mark check. It's the year of the rabbit coming up next year. Follow the white rabbit. I mean, or don't. No man comes to the father unless he draws him. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, Skip. There's my shout out, Shiloh at Robin Lane, back on Harold Camping's World 2019. My name is Robin Henry Tease. I was born June 28, 1976, in Bartow, Florida, even though I lived in Lakeland. I was born in the 8th district and is of the 7. I go into perdition along with Stephen James Deshaun. So I can wound his head and get everybody to worship him because you don't believe me. Before I was born, Michael, Billy, Michael, William, Dawn, Barbara, my mom, Barbara. How fitting to be part of a family, but to be cut in to the picture. And then there I am uh, in a real picture. Oh, look, my sister Dawn has horns on her head. Like the, <laughs> look at the horns. It's from their t-shirts. That's crazy, Dawn. They got you as the devil. There we all are. You notice one thing is missing? That's right. My dad. Mom? Where's dad? Huh? Oh, there he is. Right when I was first born. Hey, Dad. Oh, 
a holy terror. 